the main topic on Instagram and YouTube and everywhere is this boy Keefe D, man. What the hell? This boy got arrested for that Tupac murder, man. 27 years later. Shit, wow, bro. What was he thinking? He going on all these interviews. He going on Vlad TV doing interviews. Going on all these other channels and shit doing interviews or talking about it. If anything, I think he can get uh, conspiracy and maybe accessory to the crime or something because he was in the car with him. He said he didn't do it. He said uh, Orlando did it. Let's react to this shit. Police department. And my goal here today is to walk you through our investigation and what led us to the indictment of Dwayne Davis, also known as KVD, for the murder of Tupac Shakur. Damn. This case has been reviewed by our homicide team and homicide detectives. 27 years later, bro. And ultimately, our persistence in this investigation has paid off. Let me walk you through a timeline of events uh, that, as we know them right now. Prior to September 7th of 1996, as we all know, Tupac Shakur was an artist who was signed with Death Row Records. And that Death Row Records and its CEO, Marion Shug Knight, were closely affiliated with the Mob Piru criminal street gangs. And that they had an ongoing feud with the South Side Compton Crips. Gang bang shit. Was the leader and shot caller of the South Side Compton Crips. And both of these gangs operated out of the Southern California area of Compton. On the night of September 7th of 1996, Tupac Shakur, along with Suge Knight, and members of their entourage, which include members of Mob Piru, came to Vegas to attend the Mike Tyson fight at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Members of the Southside Compton Crips, which included Dwayne Davis, along with his nephew, Orlando Anderson, were also in attendance at the same event. As both... Hold on, let me pause it first. I will keep it real. Tupac brought it on himself because he got involved with some shit he had nothing to do with. Nothing to do with. I'm going to be 100, bro. He had shit to do with that shit. He wasn't no gangbanger, but he wanted to rep and wanted to ride with his home team, ride with his team. Like, I ain't, you know, you got to look at it both ways. I think he made a big mistake by trying to prove he tough and prove he down that night in particular. You know, that wasn't the place to do it. I guess he thought he was safe because he was out of town. He was in, they was in Las Vegas, not L.A., so he thought he probably thought he was on the safer grounds and shit, but turns out he wouldn't. Anyway, let's keep going, man. Leaving the fight, members of Death Row Records spotted Orlando Anderson near an elevator bay bank inside the MGM, and at that time they began... What I was doing in 96. Near that elevator bank. I don't have a clue what I was doing in 96. I can't remember. Many of you have already seen related to this incident. He was in the so studio. You will see Tupac Shakur, who's wearing a shiny satiny shirt, along with Marion Shug Knight, who's a large man in a brown suit, punching and kicking Orlando Anderson. Following this incident, you'll see hotel security intervene, and then they will leave the area of the fight. Now, if you hadn't seen this by now, I don't know where you've been. You've been under a rug or something, but, you know, everybody's seen this footage of what happened. But anyway, let me, sh come on, bro. Let me, let me, this dude, he want to say what's up, y'all. Say what's happening, man. What's happening? Tell him what your name is. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, well, get up out of here, then, man. Let me, let me finish up my show, bro. I'll holler at you in a little bit. Let's get back to it. Little did anyone know that it is this incident right here that would ultimately lead to the retaliatory shooting and death of Tupac Shakur. Following this incident, Tupac and Suge Knight both left the MGM to make their way to a post-fight party, which was to occur at a local nightclub. At the same time, word had spread amongst members of the Southside Compton Crips of what had occurred inside the MGM, and then that's when Dwayne Davis began to devise a plan to obtain a firearm and retaliate against Suge Knight and Mr. Shakur for what occurred inside the hotel against Mr. I Knight. hope like hell he still had a gun in his crib, bro. He entered into a white Cadillac along with Terrence Brown, DeAndre Smith, 
and Orlando Anderson. Based on Damn. the investigation, this is where we know. Everybody did. Everybody did but him. Sheesh. They were seated. At some point in time, as they were in the white Cadillac, Mr. Davis took the gun that he had obtained and provided it to the passengers in the rear seat of the vehicle. As they were both, as they were driving west on Flamingo Road near Koval, they had located the black BMW, which was driven by Suge Knight, and then the passenger seat was Tupac Shakur. And as they turned around, they pulled up near the passenger side of that vehicle and immediately began shooting at Mr. Knight and Mr. Shakur. Following that shooting, the white Cadillac fled the area southbound on Koval. And as our, after our officers arrived on scene, Tupac was later transported to the University Medical Center where he was treated medically and died approximately six days later on September 13th. Source of this video is CNN, man, if y'all want to, you know, watch it on y'all own time. Handle this investigation from its onset and for a short amount of time. And within a short amount of time, what we knew was that we were working a gang investigation where our victims, our witnesses, and our suspects were all from Southern California and not local to Las Vegas. Within the first few months of the investigation, our detectives knew most of the information I just briefed you on. However, we never had the necessary evidence to bring this case forward and present it for criminal charges. As time went on, this case had been reviewed multiple times by different investigators assigned to my section, but it wasn't until 2018 that this case was reinvigorated as additional information came to light from him, to this homicide. From him talking, from him talking too damn much on Vlad TV and shit. Niggas is crazy, man. I don't know. Nowadays, you do some shit you want everybody to know. You want the world to know. Back when I was coming up, when no cameras, when none of that shit. Niggas didn't want to take pictures. Niggas would duck at every goddamn thing. Now niggas want the world to know. They want to sit in front of the camera and tell every goddamn thing. Damn fools. Specifically, Dwayne Davis's own admissions to his involvement in this homicide investigation. Self-snitching. To numerous different media outlets. In our section, we knew at this time that this was likely our last time to take a run at this case, to successfully solve this case and bring forth a criminal charge. It was at that time that this case was assigned to Cliff Mogg, a detective within my homicide section. And over the last five years, this, my section worked closely, hand in hand with the Clark County District Attorney's Office and followed a systematic investigative plan over the last five years. We've conducted countless interviews and corroborated numerous facts that were not only consistent with the crime scene on the night of the incident, but also corroborated and were consistent with the sequence of events that night. This ultimately led to us procuring a search warrant which was executed at Mr. Davis's residence in Henderson, Nevada. And following the execution of that search warrant in close coordination with the district attorney's office, this case was presented to the grand jury, which ultimately led to Davis being indicted. Man, I hope he did not have that gun still 27 years later in his damn house. An indictment in the murder of legendary rapper Tupac Shakur. Really, investigators, they're going into stunt. Shit crazy. And then the nigga moved from L.A. to Las Vegas. Come on, bro. I don't know what niggas be thinking, man. This shit is wild, bro.